It's just a thought. <clears throat> I'm really grateful for um, the experience um, and the knowledge that I gained. I think knowledge is power when you have the more information that you have in your little bank of information on a certain topic, the more intelligent you can have a conversation when people ask questions and they're saying, well, why do you want to do that? If you're really wishy-washy on why you want to do something and you don't have any background information as to why you're coming up with that conclusion, it's hard for you to feel grounded and sure about your decision. So I'm really grateful for the experience that I had um, and the knowledge from becoming a doula and was very honored by the experiences of um, the women that have allowed me to come into their lives and to gain that perspective from an outside point of view and I see how they've gone through that decision process and what's allowed them to come to the conclusions which they have and a lot of that is the internet is a valuable tool. We now have something at our fingertips that can gather information on one topic from so many different resources and when you want to go do the research on something yourself, it becomes much more valuable to you than someone even giving you their opinion. I mean, it's nice to get other people's opinions, but when you have a ground of, of you know, a foundation of knowledge on something, and you, then you have a conviction, and you've come to a conclusion yourself, and you have now a conviction of that because of your knowledge, you, you come from a better space than just, well, my friend said this, or this happened with, you know, there's all kinds of experiences out there. You can find someone to fit every option that you want to go into. And so if if you really want to, you know, delve into water births, um, you know, some women, the water just is so soothing to them, and it, it just speaks to them, and it's so buoyant. And there's a lot of aspects about water birth that are, that are fat, fascinating. If you want, you know, you have a whole arena that you can go and investigate there. And if you want to do, you know, a home birth or if you want to do, you know, it, it would just be, you know, there's so many different options out there. But I think for a woman, um, going through the internet, finding some different things, reading about things, and then formulating in her mind what feels good for her and what she wants to do and talking with her partner too on on because you both need to be on the same page you can't come at a birth with two people coming together to co-create and then one person wanting to do it one way and being at odds in what you want how you want that to present itself in the birth process and so it's a process that both of you need to do together and be on the same page together and you know compromise you know on both sides to come to something new that's just for the two of you that you've created together you've created this little baby together and create the space and the atmosphere that you want to bring it into and because that's the beginning of this little baby's life and that's the beginning of another part of your relationship together because a baby brings a whole new adjustment period for that whole time you know that space in your life and um, to have that be a bonding thing for the both of you, it needs to be something that both of you can come together on. So, um, if you want to do it differently and your mother did it, well guess what? His mom did it some way too. What if he wants to bring a little bit of that in? So both of you come together and create something that's yours, uniquely the two of yours. And, um, and have some grounding and some knowledge of why you've come to that. Because people might question if it's a little out of a little out of the norm or out of the routine then then people are going to ask you have an answer for them you know have a little bit of information as to why you've done that some case studies or whatever you know whatever it is or some of the fascinating aspects of a water birth if you know whatever it is that you might decide bring up some of the good points because it's so i think it's also valuable for people to realize that there's other options out there it doesn't all have to be one way. We're not all made the same. We're not going to fit in all to the same mold and, you know, all those babies aren't going to come out the very same. It's just going to be so different. So having, um, having a way that um, works for the two of you, but then also you have to realize that you need to be flexible because it's, um, no matter how much you research or how much you study, or how much you prepare to have it be one way, it's really not going to turn out exactly like you planned it. You just have to know that. 
And so if you can, at the same time, be flexible, know what it's about, know what your process that you want to bring is all about so you can, you know, be flexible with, with certain aspects as they come along and go with the flow. If you have to change up something, it, it's okay. But at least you know enough about the process where um, you're not ignorant on a certain thing and, and somebody just can't push you in one direction and, and you run that way. So um, if you want to have a jacuzzi, you know, that what you know that can be added into your you just kind of, and it's nice to let them know ahead of time too let the nurses know let the doctor know whoever it is what you're what you're wanting to include and those things can usually be added <coughs> um are you ready one of the things that as a doula that i have used the very very most that has been really helpful <coughs> has been um, a hand massage. And there's a lot of different variations of this. Um, but without fail, no matter how many comfort measures we go through, whether it's the ball, whether it's a position, whether it's massage or combing their hair or whatever it might be, um, um, you know, hot packs, um, we can be doing, and, and, uh, and this picture comes to my mind of one of my, my birth ladies that she was sitting on a ball because that was more comfortable to her. It was not as hard as the bed. And she loved and she wanted her mom there because she was really close to her mom. But she loved because she always remembered when she was young, her mother would comb her hair. So she wanted her mom in there combing her hair because that was just so soothing to her. Even as she was married, every time her mom came around, she would brush her hair. So she wanted her mom brushing her hair up into this ponytail. We have this picture of her mom pulling her hair up into this ponytail and she's pulling tight on this ponytail and she's sitting on this ball and her husband has her in this this death grip on her hand because you know you could there's several different ways you can do the hand massage I don't know if I can even do it with my own hand but you can you can put pressure up through here because this is a pressure point for pain in the palm of your hand what do you normally do when you have you stub your toe or you hit your thumb or something you just want to clench your well it's because there's a there's a pressure point for pain in the palm of your hand. And so if you use that to your advantage, you can um, put pressure. Okay. <coughs> Linnea, shut the fridge. We're waiting for you. Thank you. What do you need? What'd she say? So she's on this ball. Her mom's got her hair. Her husband has her. And and if I can show on, on your hand, um, you've got that pressure point up in there. You just bring both fingers up in here and do the pressure this way. Thumbs on top of here. You can be putting pressure across this way. Or you can just even grip the side of their hand, and that's how we had her hand. It's just in this, you know, this death grip right here like this. And he was squeezing for the life of him, and I was, and her shoulders were so, her shoulders hurt so bad from the tension that she was just, and I'm with her, and I'm on her shoulders, and, and the nurse was like, oh, we got to have a picture of that. Her mom, her husband, the doula, the ball, it was all there. But some, but the hand, the hand massage is one of, the most effective and most used techniques that I have done with every single birth and I have helped at least I've helped over 95 plus births and assisted and been the, the the birthing coach for those and without fail no matter what other technique the woman wants to use sometimes you you change up which hand or how how hard this is being done because if you can because once you're holding onto a chair and because she'll instinctively want to do this you know just grip the chair or the sides of the bed or something and if you can instead give her that release that she's trying to attain with her own grip because once you've tightened up she's tightened all this up it's going to it just moves and it's your she's just tightening every muscle up and the more you can relax the easier that whole process will become 
So the more that you can help her have that release without having her tense her muscles, that's the whole goal here, is trying to help her be in that relaxed position. So by her husband putting that pressure, or partner, whatever, her mom, um, <clears throat> putting that pressure on her hand, that allows her to still have relaxed arms, but she's getting that pressure point um, and that release of tension and that pain um, from that from that pain pressure point and it allows her to be able to still have that relaxation feeling and like I said it's the most effective tool that we've I've always used no matter what else is going on okay I um, one aspect that I think is important too is when um, you're preparing for birth uh, as you're looking at the things that you want, like if music is very soothing for you, you need to write down for you what works for you. When you are in a stressful, tense situation, whether it's a family situation or kids or when you've had a really long day, what do you turn to to get to just feel more relaxed and to relieve that stress? Because what you want to do is you've already developed coping skills that work for you that you're already familiar with. You just need to tune into what those are and use those same ones. Don't don't start a whole new, you know. Of course, there's going to be some things that you can learn and you can incorporate into that. But start with what you already know, what's comfortable for you, because you'll be easier. It'll be easier for you to move into that space because when you get into the middle of a stressful situation, all the breathing techniques and everything they try and teach you with the last, you know, six weeks are gone. And unless you have your husband or your partner or a mother or somebody or a doula sitting right there in your ear, you know, helping you remember that whole process, you're just trying to cope, you know, and it's not a time to try and remember some new learned information. But you will remember things that you're already used to doing that's more of a routine. So if you can write down some of the things that are helpful for you, whether it's music, whether it's water, um, <clears throat> maybe it's a blanket. My daughter loved a certain blanket and it just the feel of something and just to have it close or something and um, you know just like kids. So if there's a certain pill you've attached to, uh, maybe it's even um, a smell. Oils are very helpful for a lot of people because it's something that they already use in their home. Well, if you end up at the hospital and now you're in the middle of a stressful situation and you're trying to just get through something, you really might want to bring any any aspect that you have already developed of a coping skill that works for you for stress and for relaxation um, you need to put that as part of your birth plan and your birth experience and bringing that baby in um, so the oils a pillow a feel um, you know go through the different senses what you know list one for each one of your senses something that's a visual maybe it's a picture that you've really attached to that really brings a calmness and a serene and a peaceful feeling for you. Um, an ocean scene. Um, and that's what um, some of the birthing techniques teach you know, visualization. But you know, a real picture. Don't try and visualize something if it's a new vision for you. You know, put it in a picture so you don't have to sit there and try and make it when you're, ah, you know, trying in a, it's a stressful situation. If you can find a picture, you know, a photograph of something online of that scene that you've created in your mind that's peaceful for you, that's better than trying to visualize it in the middle of, a, you know, crisis mode. So, um, even if it's just one or two things that you can bring from your home environment into your, the hospital or whatever, you know, wherever you decide to have your baby, though, that's an important part. So, that's why it's important to have your partner involved. If, they, if they're part of, they're already part of your emotional um, makeup and your home environment, and if if just a hug from them, you know, or a book that you write, if you like to just kind of go into a, a dark space and read a book, and that helps you to relax, then you need to, you know, turn off all the lights in the in the hospital room, you know, take your music and just kind of go be by yourself. But if your partner's part of that relaxation process, he needs to be involved in that whole process too because he's already involved normally in your daily routine. And so um, that's why it's important to bring some of, some of these aspects and not all of a sudden pluck yourself out of your normal, comfortable routine that you're already used to and then 
all of a sudden now you need to feel relaxed and comfortable clearing this whole new situation. It's really difficult to try and make that happen. So the longer you can stay in your comfortable environment or at least bring some of those aspects over into um, your birthing process will be much easier. I am a little worried about how long well the birds have been for this, but I wanted to just get a picture of one of them over on the roof <laughs> so, so that I can, and they just, they were all up there a second ago. I, I think we should go in and do a little bit more in the house of just a slight repeat of what you just did, just because I'm not sure what this is going to let you like. I wish I could have got those birds. They were all walking. There was about five of them over there. Oh, sure. sitting on that, sitting on a leaf. Sitting on the roof. Oh. I don't know if they're the ones that make all the noise, but... Oh, well, maybe I'll get them after, but let's just go in and just do a little repeat of that, and then we'll be done. Just because that was so valuable, and everything, mm. and the birds were so loud that I'm just not <laughs> sure. How did you hear them? Do you, do you think you can shut the, the sliders just because... Oh, yeah, they, were, they, they come and go, but sometimes they'd be like, blah, 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 and you'd be talking, and it would be hard to kind of... I just don't know if it's going to be too distracting or not, but... Anyway, um, I, I mean, I just thought we could maybe repeat a little tiny bit of that. It's so valuable. So, so valuable. Oops, sorry. You're probably getting ready to be just done with all this stuff. Well, okay. I don't have to pick up kids, so. Yeah, so we're done. I mean, we'll just. Well, I don't have to pick up kids. Well, She's okay. not at school. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's, let's do a little. Oh, oh, I've been filming that whole time. Um, as you're creating, as you're visualizing in your mind what type of a birth experience you want to have, um, make a little list of the things that you already use as coping techniques or stress release when you come home from a long day or, you know, it's been a busy day with all the kids or, you know, family situation or whatever. Um, write down the things that you, whether it's you take a nice hot bath or, you know, you need to go for a walk, or you like to just go in your room by yourself and retreat. Um, oils, sensation, you know, music, um, smells. So go through the senses and, and pick something that targets, you know, a few of those and um, that you can use for relaxation and de-stressing and incorporate those into your birth process because if you try and create you know you, you already know what helps you to become relaxed and to de-stress and to all of a sudden you know know what helps you to relax you take you out of that comfortable environment and move you over to a hospital room with new people new environments lights you know you know you're not you're not in your comfortable bed um, it's difficult to try and say you know now relax and you know Go through this birthing process, you know, and it relaxing is um, one of the most key things that you need to do. So, you, if you can bring some of those over into that birth process, whether it's a pillow, a blanket, a smell, um, music, um, if you need to incorporate the jacuzzi into that whole process, your partner, because he's part of your he's part of your environment at home too, and if just a hug from him or him, you know, touching you can bring that comfort and that um, relaxation, help you get that relaxed feeling. You want to have some of those things come over into, so don't forget the pillow or the oils or um, so that you can, you know, have some of that because those you've already got a routine. You've already got memories of that same and your body will naturally and even more easily go into that process than it will some new learned you know, newly acquired process like a breathing, you know, so the, so the Lamaze classes and, and the, breath, you know, the birthing classes are good, but unless you have your partner right there in your ear reminding you what that breathing process is for that certain stage of contractions or, you know, um, you're not going to be able to recall new information as easily as you will go into something that's already set in your, in your, in your pattern. And, um, that process will become a little bit easier and more comfortable for you if you can bring something that's already, you know, comfortable for you into that new environment that you're trying to, 
to birth in. Um, one of the things that um, is the most used technique that no matter what is going on, no matter what stage they're in, um, the woman is always wanting, you know, this hand, this hand technique. Because if you're going to, I jiggled. Move chair. off. Well, and if you're going to move out of that chair, let me use your oh, hand. Oh, right. Then I just. <clears> yeah. Okay, so I'll just start I right just there. Make sure you put it up, like about there, where we okay. won't see it. Okay. Close. So, we'll, so right here. Well, right here. Uh, okay. I can't see if it's in front of the window. So in front of you is oh, okay. good because that's okay. the background. Right. Okay. Okay. So one of the techniques that. We use, I use the most, and that's most effective for any stage of labor, and no matter what else has been going on, is the hand massage. And there's different variations of the hand massage, um, different ways that you can do it, or different positions you can use it in. If I could, um, you have a pressure point for pain in the palm of your hand. So when you normally, okay, so we need to start that one again. Linnea. Just Linnea. So when um, there's different ways that you can do this, but you have a pressure point for pain in the palm of your hand. So normally and instinctively, when you have stubbed your toe or you hit your thumb or something, you know you just want to clench your fist. And so if if the woman tenses up all of these muscles from her arm all the way to her shoulders, you know, to her stomach muscles when you're clenching your fist that's not going to help the relaxation process in trying to let those muscles release and relax. So if a, if a partner or a doula or a mother, someone that is there can give that woman this release by letting her hand and her whole arm be relaxed and you can do it on the side, you can put you know, back pressure with the thumbs across here. You can be moving across here. And it's always nice to use oil too because then you're not pulling the skin as much and it's a really nice, a nice smooth feeling. But um, it seems like no matter what other technique we're using, whether she's sitting on the ball, whether you're rubbing her shoulders, she always wants one of her hands squeezed. And so I've used this without fail almost every single time, even even if we're doing some other position or something else, she'll still, even if she's on all fours, she'll, you know, be on the ball and she'll still, do my hand, do my hand, because it's very effective. Once you've taught them this, I, I don't know what it is, but once we've, we've worked with this in some of the prenatals, it's, it's very effective. And that was just one that I discovered with my husband, probably not until my fifth or sixth baby, and I was just gripping, gripping the sides of, the bed, and he's like, "Here, give." Sorry, I want you to look at me because okay. I want you to keep your face in the same direction. He's like, and I was just gripping the sides of the bed, and he was like, "Here, give me, give me your hand. Let me do that. Let me do that." And so I just, I just, oh, yeah, because I was so tired of just, you know, every time a contraction came. But you know, it's the, you shouldn't be doing that. But that's a whole nother lesson. But he just, so he took my hand and he gripped my hand. And it's got to be a pretty solid grip, so don't get some wimpy person to do that grip. Get a strong, firm-handed person to, to get that grip on you. And all of a sudden, it's just like, oh, you can just relax, and it's very effective. Awesome. Okay, so... Um, do you want me to redo that whole ball hair thing? <laughs> I didn't know if you wanted me to redo uh, that whole thing. Oh, right I there. love that. I think, you know, that one wasn't too loud. Like, there was intermittent problems up there, but I think... Okay. Um, but then it might it might make the interview look a little choppy if we're in one place and then another place. So why don't you go ahead and do that? Okay. And then um, was there anything else you did outside that you really 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 wanted to be in it? Just in case. That was the only thing I could think of. Can okay. you think of anything? Um, Other I, than that, the uh, ball part. Think now. Uh, well, I liked what you were saying about the husband and the wife. You know researching it on the internet. Oh, and, that whole and part too? Together, oh. you know, making mm. a, a unified choice. I'm not saying you have to do the whole thing over again. I'm saying, mm. you know, I've, I've done this so many times that sometimes, you know, if you have an inkling about something, sometimes it's right. Like, with the birds, I don't know how it's going to work. 
Okay. But because it's interspersed in the film in different places, it'll probably be okay that it's different. It doesn't have okay. to be in the same spot every time. Okay. So, you know, if you want to do the hair thing just in case, because it'd be fun, can you get that picture? Yeah. You still have it? Not with me. No, but do you do know about online? Or could you get it from the lady? Would she read it? Okay, sometimes I, I mean, it's fun to have photographs to so back stuff like that up. But you might have some I know where it is, but it's in a bin, in a oh, trailer. Oh, so maybe snow. online, do you have any um, photos of you at births doing stuff? Uh huh. Yeah. That you yeah. have the rights to use? Yeah, I, each one of my births signed a paper. Did they? Mm -hmm. Okay, so is there anything that you have <coughs> images of that you could talk about to kind of, that we could use like images to back up? Because it'd be fun to have at least one picture of you in action doing your work. Okay, I might be able to find one. It's on a folder. Do and a can you think online. of a story that might go with that or could it just be on anything? I'm going to have to look at that after we got done. Okay. I'd have to look at those pictures. Well, I'm just thinking, you know, maybe just talk about some general things to do with, um, you know, what, okay, how about, do you want to do the thing about the fella, the father and the mother again? Or? Okay. Okay. Um, one of the things that I feel is really good for um, a, um, a birthing mother and a partner to do together is to um, come together with, if you want to do, you know, come together with, because your mother did something a certain way, but you know what? His mother did something a certain way too, or maybe his sister. And create something that is uniquely the two of yours. So how you go about doing that is just, you know, you might want to do something that's out of the routine, but make sure that when you go into that, you have some foundation for being able to arrive at that conclusion. And the internet is a really great tool that we have at our fingertips right now that we can go into the internet and research any topic, whether it's water birth or, um, you know, Lamaze, hypnobirthing, you know, all these different things that you can bring into um, a birth process. And you have case studies and you've got examples. And it's nice to get other people's opinion, but if you're really wishy-washy and why you've come about um, a, and reached a conclusion about something, oh, well, somebody told me this, or my friend, you know, did it this way, but you really don't have any grounding as to why that works or, or the foundation of that whole principle or the different um, reasons that, those, um, that it works, um, then it's much more effective when you're talking to people and explaining to them why you want to do something if you have a list of benefits that go along with that process or a list of reasons why, you know, it hasn't worked for someone to create something for you that's just uniquely yours. Um, so whether it's, um, you know, so bring your partner into part of that process too because this is a process that can be bonding for the both of you together and um, bring some of the things that he wants, both of you compromise and create something that's, you know, uniquely the two of yours as you're bringing this new little baby into the world and creating a space for this baby to come into your home. Um, and it can just be an environment of working together and coming together for the benefit and for, um, you know, for this little baby and welcoming this baby to come into the world. Um, um, oh, I lost where it's going to go. That's okay. So, um, try to bring some of the different things that are, that are helpful. Um, you know, for each, the, whether it's a water birth and, and use some of those things, in the, the hospital, and be sure that you let the nurse know ahead of time. If you would like to get into the jacuzzi, let them know because a lot in the way in that room or a wheelchair gets put in there, you know, let them know so they can prepare that room. So when you're ready to use it, it's not, oh, we can't have that ready for half an hour because it takes a while for the tub to fill up. You know, let them know that you'd like to use that. Um, can you say what you said about how you're, that you thought the, the water birth worked like an epidemic? <coughs> That's what your midwives told you. Only if you used it when you really, really needed it. Could you just say that one more time, too, in, in context with the, with the same yeah. setting? So if you let the nurses know ahead of time that you want to use that water birth or the jacuzzi um, and use that water as part of that birthing process, 
um, it can be very effective. You've got, um, I just think of the feeling when I step into a nice hot shower and that water just kind of falls over you. You just kind of, all the stress of the day just kind of washes down the drain. And so if you can, if you want to use the jacuzzi and let them know ahead of time, that jacuzzi can be just as effective as an epidural. And when I was, um, ha when my midwives let me use the jacuzzi for some of my, um, my own births, you use it at the, at the point that you would want an epidural. Okay, I'm ready for something real different here. I'm just about, you know. And then you need to get off the bed. You've got to walk into another room, you know. And all of a sudden you slide into that warm, moving water. And it just, you know, it, the, the muscles relax. They release. You've got the warm movement of the water. And, and the, whole, the whole thing just shifts and the movement of you walking and getting into the tub and stretching a little bit also does, you know, can do things for the position of the baby's head. And, um, you know, sitting in that jacuzzi for 20 minutes can really move you out of a stuck spot. And suddenly you're progressing way quicker than you were on the bed in a stationary, you know, position. And you're able to ah, feel success in getting somewhere, and now you're like, oh, okay, okay, I can do this, you've got new energy, you've got, you know, progress, and, and pretty soon, and if, and if, if they, if you've got a nurse that's really willing to come in with a Doppler and do the monitoring right there, so you don't only get, you know, 15 or 20 minutes in the tub, if you want to stay there longer, and, you know, they can monitor what the baby's doing right there in the tub, and just get a heartbeat, you know, and that's part of the routine too, the hospital protocol. And, and, and that can be done if you've got a nurse that's willing to do that. Um, that's an option. And then you can stay there longer because more often times than not, they'll come in there and check you. Oh, let's time to get out of that tub. And you're, next thing you know, you're onto that delivery bed and you're pushing. So, um, but it needs to be used at the same time that you would want to be using an epidural. And it can be very effective that way. Um, so bring some of those things that help relax you into your other environment of the hospital or whatever it is that you choose to birth. And those things that you're used to using will be easier returned to um, coming into a new environment. And um, be sure and bring your partner with you. He's an important part of that environment too because he's going to be there when, you know, he was there to help create that baby and he's going to be there when you bring that baby home. So I've had a mother who had had six children. It was her sixth one, her sixth um, her birth. And she, her husband was not involved. He had the remote on the TV, you know, for, in the room. And he wasn't really involved. Of course, he didn't really know how to be involved. And she was to the point where she really needed help and she wanted, you know, this, this sixth baby was going to add a new level of stress to their home. And she just felt like she needed more support from him. And, you know, when they got home too, and she felt like if he could be more of that process, and it's very true, if he can be more of that birthing process and he feels like he has given birth to that baby with you, he doesn't exit the scene when you bring that baby home. He is right there and he's very attentive. And she said it was like, even though they had five kids at home and this was now a new added um, element, she said it was like there was this little bubble around just the three of them for weeks. She said it was amazing because he had been able to feel like he was, he was a process, part of that process, and he birthed that baby. And when they got home, he wanted to be right there with the baby and changing the baby and bathing the baby and just taking care of the mom because he, he saw and he participated in what she had gone through to bring that baby into the world. And he wasn't about to just hand that off to, to her now. And he was part of that whole process. She said it just changed the whole tone of their home when this time when she brought the baby home. And it wasn't just her baby to take care of, it was their baby. That's really good. I wanted to ask you two things. Um, oh, I didn't do the ball thing, but okay. yeah. Well, we could do that, but just, um, what, oh, sorry, it's right there on the tip of my tongue. Oh, sorry. No, no, it's fine. Um, it was their baby. Oh, what would you say to the average person who is, you know, thinking, well, 
well, why not just have an epidural? Because it's going to be so much easier. It's like going to the dentist. Um, everybody has them. Um, everybody seems to be okay. And, you know, why okay. can't I just, why, don't, why not just do it? You know, a lot of times I get asked the question, and you hear it a lot, too, because there's so many stories of, you know, just the regular process of laying on the bed, having the epidural, and, you know, oh, here come the contractions, and, you know, you can feel them. They're really hard now, and you push the baby out. Um, but, you know, there's a lot to be said for women have been giving birth for thousands of years, and they've trusted the strength, their inner strength, and the process of their body and being able to bring that baby into the world. And I have to tell you that birthing that baby and going through labor is, I would probably say, 80% mentally. Because if you are not mentally ready to go into that whole birth process, and no matter what it takes, this is, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get through this. Because it's just like any hard situation. If you were, if you were really working out for a marathon or, or, you know, exercise routine, you know, if you wake up in the morning and you're like, you know, I'm just not feeling it today, it's, you're not going to be very effective in your exercise routine. And it's going to be hard to even walk into the place, let alone, you know, get through the whole routine. So it's, I would say it's 80% mental. You need to really exercise those mental muscles to, okay, I can do this. I trust my body. I know what the process is. I know what it's going to feel like. I'm prepared. I've, I've prepared the best I can. I've got support system, whatever it is that you need to do. And you're ready. You're ready to do it. Of course, now you have to be still flexible because there's going to be things that happen that are unexpected almost with every single delivery. There's going to be things that you just weren't, you know, wasn't, I didn't expect that or you weren't ready for that. And that's an expected thing. And it'll happen. But at the same time, if you're ready to do, you know, you're just determined like you would be with any big project or undertaking that you have gotten through in your life. You have to be ready. I can do this, you know. And you go into it with that same attitude, not with like, you know, I'm just not feeling it today, then um, you'll get through it. So you have to go into it with that attitude and trust your body, trust those around you. Don't surround yourself with people that are not trusting in the process that you have decided on. If you've decided you want to do one thing, do not put anyone around in that room that is not supportive of what you want to accomplish. Even though it might not go 100% as you have planned, you still need to have support around you that will give you the support to the end goal of what you have decided to do. If, um, so... Can you give some examples? Um, <sighs> like, for example, say you decide to have a home birth and your mother is a really supportive person. Um, or it could be something. Okay, else. well, it could be, I was thinking more of the epidural. Sure, let's do that. Um, Um, okay, so let, let's say, for example, that you really want to, you've had the epidural before, and you just laid on the bed, and you've heard other women talking about, you know, that powerful feeling of that, you know, that pushing sensation of you can't stop it. It's like you couldn't will that pushing out that baby if you wanted to will that away. You, it's your body doing it, and to feel that movement of that pushing sensation, it's like you're totally, your body is so powerful when that feeling comes and you can't hold that back. And to have, and you've heard women talking about that and you're like, well, I wonder what that felt like. You're just wanting to participate in that. If you've decided that you, you know what, this time I don't want to have an epidural. I want to feel the power and the strength of the birth process, and I want to participate in that. I want to be there 100%. Then you need to surround yourself with women, mothers, a doctor who's like, you know, why go through that, you know, just, you know, and he's sitting there saying, you know, you can, 
you can bail on, you know, just get the epidural and be done here. But you know, there is so much, there's a sense of accomplishment that comes with, you know, and both sides have their advantages. And so you can find arguments to support either side. If you have decided for yourself with your partner that this is what you want, you can do it. You can create that space as long as you have support around you that will help you to accomplish that goal. So you talk to your doctor ahead of time, you talk to the people that want to be there with you, whether it's just your partner, your husband, or your midwife, or your doula, whoever that is, and you bring those people into the circle that will help you accomplish your goal. And it's just like if you want to run across the finish line or if you want to walk, the end result's still going to be the same. You're going to cross that finish line. But if for you it's important for you to be running across that line, not just barely walking across it, then you want somebody on either side of you that'll help you run across that finish line, not, you know, okay, you're on your own here, you know, and you're just going to barely make it across that finish line. Get people on the side of you that'll help you to accomplish that goal. And you'll be able to do it because your body can do it. And if mentally you're ready to go there and you've got support, that can happen. And you can feel and be there for 100% and feel that power of the birth process, the power of your body, trusting in your body, the creation process of the baby, and the way that your body has been made to bring that baby into the world. And it can be a beautiful, um, very wonderful sense of accomplishment at the end and the finish line. The results are the same. Maybe that wasn't a very good, you know, <clears throat> ending good. line. What about, um, I mean, what about breastfeeding? Like sometimes when you have an epidural, the baby could be really sleepy. Yeah. So sometimes the results aren't the same, right? Well, the baby comes out. The baby comes out. The baby arrives. But I'm just saying, just to give a little <clears throat> bit more information about that, would you be willing to talk about that just a little bit? Or? And it's the Pitocin that actually... So cuts maybe you that could back. talk a little bit about the like the domino effect of once you get started on some and of these one, things, how they can lead to more, like the Pitocin will lead to an epidural, and then sometimes the epidural can lead to either breastfeeding problems or possible cesarean or forceps, livery, or you know, just a little touching on the cascade of interventions that can happen. Do you want to do that? Or? Okay. You done, Linnea? Oh, that's Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Hi. We're filming, We're filming some filming stuff about done. babies and stuff, so if you can be really quiet. Like, go in there with Linnea. She's watching a movie for a minute and we'll do it. Like get a drink or whatever you need. Or so but we need a few minutes, but we can't have any noise in here. Okay? <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. Okay? Linnea is in my room. When are you starting? Because I just want to go change. In your room? Why don't you just stay in your room for a little while? Just take your backpack off. Take your sweatshirt off. We'll be done in Yeah, take your backpack and your sweatshirt off, and you're fine. Um, when you start down the road of one intervention, sometimes there's a domino effect. Um, and not that any one intervention is necessarily in a, you know, bad in and of itself. Sometimes they're needed, they're needed steps that, you know, get you past a stuck spot. But we're just going to talk in a general sense for a minute that um, if there's, if you want a birth process that is unhindered by, by, you know, different interventions, then you have to realize that you have to set it up that way. If you go into it unprepared and you're not mentally ready to go there, then you know, one thing's going to lead to another. Like if you, if you, if you're, if you're um, not willing to move off the bed and change positions just because it's a little uncomfortable, you're not going to progress because you've got to be moving those different muscle muscle groups and you've got to be using those those long muscles as a part as opposed to the short muscles. You know, you've got to be switching that around. And if you're not willing to work with your, you know, the people that are in the room trying to help you accomplish a natural birth and doing that, then, you know, they're going to invite you to use the Pitocin 
or you know to get your to get your labor progressing because you need to move at a rate of about one centimeter an hour for them to be you know that's what they that's the normal that they would like if you're under that they're going to want to do something to bring about that progress to the rate that's acceptable for them so moving around helps jacuzzi helps comfort measures different things so those are the things that you need to put in your in your your bag of skills to help you get through that process. So, because once you get the Pitocin to help your progress, then the Pitocin makes those contractions stronger and closer together than, than nature would normally have them. And, and, then, and then you're gonna want some pain medication because you just wanna take off some, oh, I wish it were back to how it was, but it's kinda too late now. And then, you know, my contractions are almost too strong and how come the baby's under stress now and, you know, and now they want an internal monitor and now you gotta stay on the, the monitors longer because the baby's heart rate has gone up and now you can't even move off the bed like you could have before. So it just starts a snowball effect because you let one thing come in because of maybe your unwillingness to be a little uncomfortable and participate in a different routine or a different position and um, or you know walk down the hallway even though it's a little uncomfortable and just but just realizing that you know what and this is something else that's just really important too is as long as you have somebody there because contractions don't last for 10 minutes your contraction is going to last for, you know, an average of two minutes, one to two minutes. So you can do anything for two minutes. But when you're in the middle of 30 seconds, you think it's an eternity. And it feels like a long time. And if you have someone just right there, so that's an important thing too that you use. That's why the support people around you need to be helping you in that whole process is telling you, okay, you've got 30 seconds left, okay, count down, 30, 29, you know, and then giving you intermittent, okay, 10 more seconds, you've only got 10 more seconds, and you can feel, oh, okay, now you can start, you can feel that decline, and it's coming down off the top, you're almost to the end, okay, then you can relax, if you don't have someone that's there cheering you on every step of the way, letting you know, I've only got, you know, 10 more seconds, and and that you can do anything for two minutes, reminding you that it's not going to be ten minutes. It's only going to be two. That you can make it and you can do it. You know, and you just work and you concentrate on one contraction at a time. That you that you can do it. Then you don't get stuck in that domino effect of letting one thing come in, but it leads to the next, and then, and the next thing you know, you know, you've all of a sudden got yourself into a situation that you can't back up from. And I'll, you know, oh, and it was only 30 minutes later I was pushing that baby out. Well, if I'd have known that, I wish I would have, you know, the would'ves and the could'ves and, the, you know, are all gone now. You've still got that baby in your arms. But, you know, your sense of accomplishment that you wanted, that was really important to you, is lost in the, in the moment of. And if you can realize that having that support group and, and some of those things that you can avoid, that lead from one step to another, then um, you can have the baby and your sense of accomplishment at the end. And also, when you when you've done some of those interventions, um, sometimes that leads to breastfeeding problems and postpartum blues because you've blocked that endorphin process. When you get into that birth process and you hit a wall, and this happens for normally in circumstances outside of birth. It's, it's a natural process. When you hit a wall and you start, the adrenaline really starts to kick in now and the endorphins kick in, guess what? That's what gets you up over that hump to be able to, you know, accomplish that goal or get over that obstacle that you have come up against. It is the same for birth and anything else. You have to hit that wall of, oh, okay, I, I'm done. I can't do any more. And then that's when that endorphin process kicks in and everything starts to click the body starts to move into that that you know survival mode and those positive endorphins start start you know pumping themselves out and all of a sudden you can run faster you can you that's when you finish to cross the you know the finish line sprinting rather than barely making it because those endorphins have kicked in but they don't kick in at the beginning of the race they kick in at the very end of the race. 
So it's the same with birth. If you let the, the natural process of your body work, you get to the end of your rope, that's when your body and nature will come to your rescue. And, and um, it's wonderful to see um, how, some, how women can trust in that and that nature, you know, most of the time if you've prepared that way, you know, there's things that could happen, but it won't let you down if you, if you trust in that process and it can work for you. And, and nursing can be a good experience. Sometimes women that end up with the epidural, um, it kind of blocks those positive endorphins and those, those baby blues set in earlier than, you know, when you're still in the middle of trying to recover rather than, you know, later on down the road. And, and, and the nursing process will, is just easier too when you've got those good vibes flowing through, flowing through your body rather than blocks from, from the medications. And because those shut down all of the natural process that is there to get us over a hump and get us around a brick wall. So um, those are some of the so there's some of the positive things that can work with the natural process. I have two really quick more ones more if you if you want. I we've got, back. What we've got, got, we've got like detail. four minutes left. Okay. No, is it too much detail or do you no. want me to cut that down? No, I love it. Okay. No, I'm okay. really enjoying this is like you're just on you just see it takes a while and then you uh -huh. get a real roll. Yeah. And now it's just perfect. Okay. This always happens with filming. It's the way it is. Two just quick points of put action. Um, one thing that is important is nutrition. Um, but sometimes we're in our comfort zone as far as nutrition goes. We have things packaged, easy, microwavable now, and it's really easy to get stuck in um, the nutrition arena non no nutrition arena <laughs> um, but you know just like when they tell you that um, failure to thrive syndrome comes can stem from a baby always having a microwaved bottle when you have already put the formula in the bottle um, realize that everything if you if you have a diet of constantly microwaved food and your children have in the weight gain and the, you know but as far as your cells being um, you know nourished and your body being nourished and when it comes to that inner strength you might fall flat because um, we you so so I, I think of when I eat I live to eat I don't eat to live no, 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 it's, that's backwards. Okay, you got to start that over. <laughs> so is when, when it comes to eating, I don't, I live to eat. I don't eat to live. No, that's backwards too. Which one is it? You, you, um. Did I say that right or wrong? eat to live, not live to eat. Oh, there we go. Okay. So when it comes to nutrition, I eat to live. I don't live to eat. So as I look at what I'm eating, um, you know, I want to eat a good salad a day. I want to eat my vegetables and my fruits. I don't want to just, you know, pop some pastry in the microwave or a bagel or something and, you know, that's my lunch. You need to have other things in there that will help nourish your body that aren't microwave, that aren't, you know, that aren't, you know, cooked as much as, you know, cooked already in the store and then you've got to recook it to stick, you know, in the microwave too. Um, you know, and take, be sure you take your prenatal vitamins to fill in any little gaps, but try and get your nutrition from a first source, not a second, third, fourth source, but you know, the way nature provided it because your body will um, assimilate and absorb the nutrition from a first source the way that it comes off the tree or out of the ground first rather than a processed source because your body has to go through a conversion process um, that's a lot more difficult with processed foods than it does with foods that come in their natural form because our bodies and nature were created from the same process you know in the same process and it can process natural foods better than than processed ones so um, eating things that are more raw and steamed um, you know um, and eating you know Putting stuff into a smoothie. You can put a lot of things into a smoothie that you wouldn't necessarily want to eat off of a plate, whether it's spinach or kale or, you know, just some other things, some nutritional yeast, a few, 
you know, other supplements, coconut oil for the omega-3s, you, you know, your flaxseed oil. Um, it's easier to put those things into a shake um, and just, you know, even if it's a small one, you know, get that down and be done for the day. Um, then you've got some of those things that are really helpful for the stretch marks, for the elasticity of your muscles, for your tendons, and all those things that are moving and changing when you are, you know, preparing for a baby to come. So um, it also helps the placenta to be stronger and more, um, more rich as far as the nutrients for the baby too. So I think of when I'm eating, I think of also the life that I'm starting for this baby. All it's got to get for its new start in life for the rest of its life is what you give it. And if you're going to short end, you know, the baby, what actually it's going to do is short end you because it's going to suck from you what it needs. And if there's, if there's some things that are not there for it, you're the one that's going to be deprived along with the baby also. So you're not just depleting yourself, but you're also, you know, not providing that good, really well-balanced, um, good start for that baby um, and you're all it has to depend on and so I think of it like a car too um, you know what you put into a car how well you take care of the car the oil changes the kind of gas you put in you know the maintenance that you put on that car if you just run that car into the ground you know but if you take care of a car and that engine and you you know the maintenance on it and you do the things that are you know required for that car to last it'll last you for a long time but you you know you don't take care of it you can take the water you know burn the water right out of the you know the radiator and you know overheat that car and your engine can be gone so um, but the long, the better you take care of that engine it can last you for a long time so our bodies are built just like that they're they're strong they can they can get you through a situation they can get you through stress they can run um, but we just need to give it the right kind of fuel and do the things with our body that would help it to you know get us to the points that we that we're looking for and um, give that baby a good start in life too